Okay, today we're going to look at Isaiah 28 and examine whether uh, this is a prophecy of Jesus and his nemesis named either Saul or Sheol. Figure out which is which. Um, so in uh, the book of Acts, we know that uh, it just so happens that Paul's uh, name is Saul. It says, Saul, who was also called Paul, Acts 13, verse 9. And that's going to uh, allow us to look at this passage and uh, prove whether it's about Jesus and whether it's about Saul and whether it's about both of them. And uh, so first let's understand that um, in Hebrew, because we're looking at Isaiah, this is all written in Hebrew, the word for Shaul and Sheol. Shaul is Saul in Hebrew. And Sheol is uh, the place of the wicked dead in in Hebrew. But the word is identical. You you would not know whether it's Shaul, Saul, or Sheol unless you know the context. And why is that? Because when we ignore the vowelization, and I'll get to that in a second, Shaul and Sheol is spelled the same way. Vowelization is where you can add a mark or slight character to indicate you think as the uh, transcriber that uh, which way it is is it Saul or is it Sheol okay so uh, this quote comes from the Jewish community's uh, website called Judaism Stack Exchange and they just matter-of-factly mention this without any concern for any Christian issue that Sheol and Sheol are identical if you ignore vowelization so when did vowelization happen well, they use diacritical signs used to represent vowels, and this was developed when? In the early Middle Ages. So this is not something that uh, was existent at the time Isaiah wrote. So how do we tell the difference between whether it's Shaul or Sheol? It's definitely not by the word on the page, because both are equally likely to be possible. So we have to look for the key, and the key is context. And that's what we'll read today. So if we turn to Isaiah 28 in the ESV, uh, I'm going to show you this is a prophecy of Jesus and his Messiah, nemesis. And here we begin with verse 14. Therefore, hear the word of Yahweh, you scoffers or mockers who rule this people in Jerusalem, because you have said, we have made a covenant with death and with Saul or Sheol, we have an agreement. When the overwhelming whip passes through, it will not come to us, for we have made lies our refuge, and in falsehood we have taken shelter. Therefore, thus says the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am the one who is laid as a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, or stone by stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. I just want to digress here a little bit before we complete, is where it says, Behold, I will found in Zion... Uh, that passage in the verse here. In the Israel Bible, they uh, translate it slightly differently, and then they give a great explanation which helps prove this is about Jesus, if you didn't think so. So it says, Behold, I will I will found in Zion, stone by stone, a tower of, pre of precious cornerstones. Okay? So, they then explain what's interesting about stone by stone here is the Hebrew word for stone is eben, and they're going to explain what is interesting about this word is that it contains within it the Hebrew words for father and son, Av and Ben. So Aven is, has father and son combined. So it says this alludes to the fact that the bond between a father and his son is as strong as a rock. But for those of us who are willing to accept Jesus as the Messiah, this is a reference that the father and son made the foundation and the sun is the chief cornerstone of that foundation. But continuing now with, with chapter 28 of Isaiah, we'll see that it continues. And I will make justice the line and righteousness the plumb line, and hail will sweep away the refuge of lies, and waters will overwhelm the shelter. So that's telling us that God's answer to these um, people who have made lies of refuge and so on in covenant with Saul or Sheol, they're going to meet their match in Jesus, and they're going to um, uh, God is going to make 
uh, on Judgment Day that righteousness is the plumb line and, and hail will sweep away, away the refuge of lives and waters will overwhelm their shelter. So everything that's been a lie brought against uh, God will be put down at that point. Well, and then verse 18 says, Then your covenant with death will be annulled, and your agreement with Saul or Sheol will not stand. When the overwhelming scourge passes through, you will be beaten down by it. And um, so this is a prophecy of Judgment Day, and then Jesus is going to also allude back to this passage about himself in Luke 20, verse 17. Jesus alludes to himself as the foundation laid at Zion. Uh, Verse 17, but he looked directly at them and said, what then is this that is written? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. So Jesus is using the same imagery that we saw here in verse um, 16 of Isaiah 28. And... um, And then verse 18, uh, Jesus goes on. He says, Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone whom it falls will be crushed. So this foundation stone, which is himself, uh, uh, will eventually have a role as being uh, the person bringing judgment. And they, they will be destroyed. And this is alluded to again in Isaiah 28, 18 that the um, those who have the covenant with Saul or Sheol will be beaten down it by the scourge that comes through that they thought they would not be subject to. So now I want to go back and say, well, I think we can all agree that the passage about the foundation stone at Zion is Jesus, right? And it also had that very uh, hidden message there about the uh, stone upon stone is really the father and son cr- uh, work together to create this foundation, and and the Jewish Bible was telling you there was a um, uh, you know basically it showed the strength of a father and son together, and but the chief cornerstone of the, the cornerstone itself is Jesus in in the uh, prophecy, and the adversary is his name is Saul or Sheol, and the, he has a covenant with many who will. Uh, take refuge in lies to pursue uh, that covenant. And um, so the question is, what we're going to get into not here, but in the next video, is Saul's covenant, what he calls my gospel, a covenant with death? Okay, and that comes from Isaiah 28, 15, because you have said we have made a covenant with death and with Saul, Shoal, we have an agreement. When the overwhelming we have passed through, they won't be subject to it. It will not come to us, for we have made lies, our refuge, and a falsehood. We have taken shelter. So there is a false competitor, a false covenant that's being offered, as Paul refers to his own gospel as his own gospel, my gospel, four or five times. And that's in direct competition with this foundation stone and precious stone, cornerstone that Jesus uh, represents in the Gospels uh, that um, uh, of Matthew and John and so on. So we won't get that into that here, but that is uh, this is the setup for us to uh, now examine: is Paul's proofs for his gospel? based on lies, such as he he misquotes Isaiah 28, we'll get into that, and he uh, misquotes Genesis 15, 6, and he misuses uh, a verse in Joel. And so we'll see, is his gospel based on lies? And if so, that will be uh, further confirmation that this indeed is a prophecy about Jesus and Paul, and Paul is the nemesis. Okay, Until next time.